Hello and welcome back to the video course about linear algebra. And in today's part 34, we will define the range and the kernel of a matrix. Both are important notions we need when we want to solve a system of linear equations. But before we start with the details, you already know, first I want to thank all the nice people who support the channel on Steady, via PayPal or by other means. And as a supporter, you find a link in the description where you can download the PDF version and the quiz for this video. Okay, then let's start with the topic of today. And as often, we start with a given matrix with m rows and n columns. And there, please recall, such a matrix A induces a linear map we often call FA. And this map sends Rn into Rm. Indeed, this knowledge is important for the two notions we will define now. And let's start with the so-called range of a matrix A. And we define it as a subset in Rm. In fact, the set consists of all the elements we hit on the right hand side with f of A. Hence, we can write it as A times x for all the elements x in Rn. In other words, all possible images on the right hand side are put into one set. So I emphasize again, the range of a matrix is a subset in Rm, where m is the number of rows of A. Okay, so this is the important notion you should remember, it's called range of A. However, some people say and write image of A. Hence, you should see, this is not special at all, this is a notion we have in general for a map between two sets. So if you know my Start Learning Mathematics series, you see this is nothing else than the range of the map FA. Therefore, essentially what is happening here is that the definition of the range is extended to a matrix A. However, now the next notion, the kernel of a matrix, is something new. Okay, now a short notation for this is simply KER of A. And indeed, as before, this also denotes a set. However, now it's a subset of Rn. So on the map level, it's something that lives on the left hand side. However, the definition is very simple. It just consists of all vectors x that are sent to the zero vector on the right hand side. In other words, Ax is equal to zero. And now this subset of Rn is called the kernel of A. It's a very important notion in linear algebra and you should definitely remember it. Moreover, you should know some people call the kernel just null space of the matrix. On the other hand, you see for each linear map we can define the kernel of the linear map by saying these are the elements that are sent to the zero vector. However, most of the time we will have a matrix when we talk about the kernel. Okay, now to finish the definition here, let's also relate the kernel to what we already know about general maps. Indeed, as we have already explained it, it's the preimage of a set under the map FA. And the corresponding set is the singleton that only has the zero vector on the right hand side inside it. So maybe it looks more complicated than it really is, it's simply the preimage of the zero vector. Therefore, it's nothing complicated, but it's a special preimage which will help us in linear algebra. And if you don't know preimages so well, you can also check out my Start Learning Mathematics series. Okay, now to remember these definitions here, let's draw a quick picture. So you know we have a vector space on the left hand side and one on the right hand side. The dimensions could be different because the one is Rn and the other one Rm. And in between, as always, you know we find our map Fa. So it maps Rn into Rm. And then you know from the definition above, the range of A is a set here on the right hand side. So maybe we visualize that with such a line. We do this because you should immediately remember here the range of A is indeed a subspace in Rm. In fact, this is something you can prove immediately. Okay, then on the other hand, the kernel of the matrix A is a subset on the left hand side. 
However, also there, we can directly prove it's a subspace as well. So please remember this important fact. Both things here are always subspaces, which means the zero vector is always included. And of course, sometimes it can happen that this is the whole thing. And on the other hand, the other extreme would be it's the whole Rn or the whole Rm. Now, if you find all of this too abstract, it's no problem at all. Soon we will have a whole calculation machine where we can calculate a lot of explicit examples. And then you will also see why both notions kernel and range are so important for us. However, before we do that, let's first connect the range of a matrix to something we have already defined before in linear algebra. Namely, the range of A can be written as a span of vectors. There, please recall the notion span we have used to generate subspaces. And now we are able to generate the subspace range of A by using the columns of the matrix A. So we know we have exactly n columns, so let's call them A1, A2 and so on. And then we know the span of these column vectors is exactly the range of A. In fact, we already know this because we have discussed the column picture of the matrix vector multiplication. And there we learned that the outcome of the matrix vector product is exactly a linear combination of the columns. In other words, everything we hit on the right hand side with the map FA lies in the span of the columns. And now indeed we hit everything in this span, so we have equality here. So I would say this is again something where you can write down the proof for yourself. Okay, now by going back in time, you remember we had some motivation to introduce things like matrices. And one important motivation was that we want to solve a system of linear equations, an LES. And there, please recall the short notation we have for an LES. It's simply A times X, matrix vector multiplication, is equal to B. So X is the unknown vector on the left hand side and B is a given vector here on the right hand side. Therefore, we immediately see we can only solve this system if B lies here in the range of A. Otherwise, it's not possible at all to find the vector X that is sent to B. Hence, for the existence of solutions of the LAS, we have to answer the question if B is in the range of A. In other words, the range tells us about the existence. And on the other hand, the kernel of A will tell us about the uniqueness of solutions. For this, we will discuss more details later, but I can already tell you the general question will be, is the kernel trivial or not? So the question is, is it the subspace that only contains the zero vector or is it bigger? And indeed, in the case it's bigger, and we will prove that soon, we cannot have just one single solution of the system. So either no solution at all, or we have infinitely many. However, this important characterization for solutions is a topic for another video. Therefore, I would say let's meet there and have a nice day. Bye. Thank you.